today we are going to look at what is called as an index in Melee Search. Those of you who are coming from a relational database management system world, that is those who have used SQL as part of your day-to-day -day life, an index is the same as a table. And those of you coming from the world of MongoDB, index is the same as a document collection. An index is responsible for holding zero or more documents. A row in the database management world is the same as a document. And for those of you coming again from the document store world, document is synonymous in both worlds. So now that we know what an index is, an index can hold at most around 4 billion rows or documents. This is because internally, Melly Search uses a 32-bit unsigned integer. Again, um, just to recall, if we look at movies.json file here, this is a document, the one that I'm highlighting here. Each of these stored in JSON format would contribute a document. And movies would be the name of an index because logically all these documents belong to a single collection called index. Let's now st see a demo of indexes. Before we start looking at the code, be sure to export two variables, the master key and the host. This will get you into the habit of using containers. So if you look at config here, previously we used to hard code values. Now we're going to use the get env function present in the OS module to retrieve this, which we have set by the terminal. When we run the Python file, these environment variables are going to be visible in this program. And we can use this particular uh, function, get env inside the OS module to get the value. So we create a config, we create a client using the URL and the API key. Then we're going to create three indexes, that is three tables with names, meteorites, movies, and some index that we're going to delete later. This is a typical Python for loop. We iterate through each of these index names. Then we call the create index function in the client API. UID is the index name. UID stands for unique identifier. In Melly search, they can, as with any database management system, the table name has to be unique across the database. So the index name has to be unique across the Melly search store instance. The next thing that we need to specify is what is called as a primary key, which uniquely identifies each document within an index. So that we can provide as part of the options. And then you'll see that it returns something called as a task. To understand the reason for the task variable being returned from the API, we need to understand what is called as an asynchronous API. Let's use a running example as a restaurant. Say you go to a restaurant, you sit at a table, an employee comes to your table and gets your order, and then the employee gets back to your table with the food order that you just placed. So you're sitting at your desk or your table and waiting for the food to arrive. Whereas, take the case of an asynchronous API, so you sit at the same table again, an employee comes to your table and gets your order, and then gives you a token for you to collect the order when ready at the serving station. Note here that the employee doesn't get your order, but you, on the other hand, monitor the, or wait for your order to get ready, you check the status of your token, and then you go and collect your order at the serving station when it's ready. So that's the difference between a synchronous and an asynchronous way of doing things. Let us now get back to this index creation task. Create index is an asynchronous task. It returns a task as a handle for us to check for an update. Remember the restaurant example, a task is just like a token. We invoke the wait for task API inside the task module with the connection configuration and the task UID as parameters. This method checks for a maximum of 5,000 milliseconds and polls the server for every 50 milliseconds to check for a status update. If the status is not enqueued or processing, then it returns. We check for the completion status and print the completion status object for further analysis if it's not successful. So here's a demo. Let's now look at the next operation of deleting an index, which is the same as dropping a table. Remember here that we used an index with name, some index to delete. Let's use 
the client API to remove this index. Upon running this, so this API, this uh, index is now gone. Remember again that wait for task is responsible for us to check for the status of index deletion as with any asynchronous operation. I'd like to demo what happens when you perform an illegal operation. So if you run this again, since some index to delete does not exist anymore, wait for task returns the status and the status is a failure. So we can look at the error code to understand that index not found is the specific error that happened. Now let's just say that you wanted to get the primary key information about an index. That is, you didn't have this code, but you were just using this Melissa store that was created by someone else. Since it's important for every document to have the primary key field, you can use client.index and give it the index name and then call the get primary key API. This is a synchronous call. So when we run this, the output is going to be ID because that's what we set as the primary key here. One thing to note is that no TCP connection happens when you invoke dot index of movies. It just keeps track of which index you're trying to look for. And get primary key is the actual call that fires off a TCP connection and gets the response for you. There's one last API that I'd like to show you as far as introduction to indexes is concerned, which is to get index settings. So if you pass the name of an index, movies, which we created earlier, and invoke the get settings API, you're going to get the settings in a dictionary. And these are things that we'll look in terms of search functionality as we move forward. But know that this API endpoint exists for you to understand what the index settings are.